important. Uh, yeah, I guess so. And, and I guess and the clipper, huh? I did pass it. Huh? Where is that? Yeah, I bet it's in the back. Yeah, you know, with the with the processional cross. Hey, Billy, how you doing? <laughs> So how'd you do from that fundraiser? One knife off apples from you, or? Yeah. Carton of apples, I think. Yeah, I think so. You do a lot of fundraisers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a six or eight weeks between when I bought them for me and I got them, I think. Yeah. Your dad's on deck this morning.
try that again. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this Palm Passion Sunday. I appreciate you braving the uh, icy roads to come to worship this morning. Uh, a little bit uh, down in numbers, but we're still two or more, are we not? Yeah. Um, it is Palm Passion Sunday, so we'll honor uh, it being Palm Sunday with the processional and the gospel reading during that processional. And then the rest of the litur liturgy will be Passion Sunday. That's something the church has been doing for the last 20 or 30 years because a lot of modern people don't have the time to come to the midweek services where we are, reflect on those Passion readings. So they, they've added it to the Palm Sunday uh, service so that the entirety of that long uh, Passion Gospel can be read for all the people. So uh, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, the instructions for making crosses uh, out of your palm fronds are out there. That's always very cool to do, especially with the kids, uh, and make the memory last longer and uh, do a neat uh, project with them. Uh, today is Noisy Offering Sunday, so get the uh, metal clanking, if you would, for the sake of the kids and, and, and how they're helping the, the work of the church. Um, just to note, if you're coming to Bible study, the two groups, Confirmation and adult, adult Study in the Narthex, are switching venues. Since we're just in Isaiah for a brief time, I'm going to give the folks in that study a little preview of the Isaiah deep dive that I want to do later on with some uh, slides, so we need to be in that room. Um, help wanted, just keep drawing your attention to that. Uh, a summer daycare helpers, most immediate need, but teachers for the coming year for kindergarten, uh, music teacher, and PE as well. Uh, Zion's PTL is holding a book fair Monday to Wednesday this week if you want to come. Uh, Monday, if we get a lot of snow, might be a little down day for that, but it is all three days. Um, there's a planning meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd for the Board of Discipleship. They're, they're going to be planning the, the adult camping retreat, and uh, I hope I get to go on that. That sounds like a lot of fun. DOT, the Department of Transportation meeting on April 4th, I, I believe 7 p.m. I didn't note the time in my notes. Um, 5.30. Okay. Yeah, it's up on the screen. There we go. Um, yeah, you guys know about all that, what they're work at doing with the streets and stuff like that. It's a follow-up on that. Um, check out page 12 for all the ways you can plug in and serve and uh, at, at Zion, both to help the church and, and to give yourself a further and deeper connection. You, you always make friends the most when you're in service, I have found. Yeah. Um, and, of course, this is the beginning of Holy Week. We will have services on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, of course, at, the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday will be 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. for both. And then Easter morning, we will have at 6 a.m. a sunrise service, normal 8 a.m., 1045 services. Of, of course, no Sunday school or uh, Bible class that day. We'll have the Easter breakfast. And uh, all of those uh, worship services will have Holy Communion. Another reminder about the Easter lilies. They're still available for purchase in the church office. And... Um, I think that's all I have, unless someone else has something to share. We have Kevin Aker waiting in the wings to, to give us an update on the Christway campaign. Kevin?
Good morning. I feel bad doing this on Palm Sunday. This just seems out of place. So try and go through this so we can get to the more important part. But um, had a good uh, February. We brought in for the Christway campaign uh, 22,000, a little over. Uh, 13,000 of that was pledged, and $4,900 was unpledged amounts that came in. Noisy Offering brought in $318, and the final for the quarter containers that the school did brought in another $455. The bingo night was a great success. Hopefully, all of you guys got to partake in that, and if you haven't, it's a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll do that again next year, but it brought in $3,300 to the Christway campaign. Did... Um, speak with the architect just to update our budget number for the new build and we had anticipated some pretty high increases coming in the way the the market was trending over the past couple years and was very pleased to see that things have stabilized a lot and from 4.5 million a couple years ago we we're at 4.75 is the estimated cost right now so that's helping us to kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit. You'll see on that screen, there's a little shovel down there. That's our 55% in hand and um, a positive general fund for the current ministry. As you see there, we're really close to that now. We're only about 760,000 away from that point. So if we can keep focused on this, given to the current ministry and this and our new ministry, it's, it's getting a lot closer. So thank you all so much for your, your generosity and, and God willing, we'll be there soon. Current ministry, uh, February had a little dip. Uh, we lost $2,100, but we are still in the black, 79698 on the year so far. That doesn't by any means mean we're flush with income or anything, but it is very nice to see that still in the black and um, fiscal year ends in June so we are doing very well so far this year and again thank you all let's keep this up and and keep both the current and upcoming ministry on our thoughts and prayers stewardship thought of the month is titled time talents and treasures last few months I have mainly focused on treasures Today, I'd like to explore the idea of our talents as ways to glorify God. James Early wrote an article titled, Are You Using Your God-Given Talents? This thought from James is what I'd like to focus on today. He starts with the question, how do I figure out what my God-given talents are? He suggests you ask yourself, what am I passionate about? What is important to me? What are your spiritual gifts? The answers to these questions will give, I'm sorry, what am I good at? The answers to these questions will give you an indication of what your spiritual gifts are. That leads to the next idea. Are you using them? If not, it's usually because of fear or lack of self-worth. And sometimes we're just not aware of the abilities God has given us. I also believe we, are all, we all have abilities that we aren't really aware of. Essentially, sometimes we need to just jump into the pool and let God help us learn to swim. Or in other words, use the abilities we are aware of and that will help us discover things about ourselves we didn't know we could do. He suggests a simple prayer is an easy way to get started. Dear God, what one thing do you want me to do today to use the talents you have given me? I want to end with a quote he attributed to one of his favorite coaches, Mrs. Kirk. She said, every talent you have is a gift from God. What you do with that talent is your gift back to him. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, 
I think it's time to share the peace. Why don't we do that? Face the rear of the sanctuary. <laughs> Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who, who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. We sing the first verse of Lift High the Cross. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage in Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. For if anyone says to you, what are you do Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need, need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, those, before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the, blessed is he, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We continue our song, Lift High the Cross.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the holy awe, we follow our Savior as he moves steadfastly to the cross. O oh God, when we could not come to you because we were lost in sin, you came to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient, even to death on the cross. His love encourages us, encourages us now to approach you openly and honestly. We need to come because we know we are sinners. Your word makes us see that in thought and word and deed. We fall short of your glory. Forgive us, Father, for Jesus' sake. List us up to live in faith and love as your children ought to live. It is true, by ourselves, we stand under God's judgment against sin. But for us, God's Son made himself nothing and took on the very nature of a servant. He knew no sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He took on himself the death we deserve, atoning for our sin and redeeming us for life. In his, in his name and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God for his mercy to us in Christ, our Savior and King. Please be seated as we sing praise the Lord. Let's pray together to our Lord. O oh God, before his suffering, your son was welcomed as king by those who shouted Hosanna and spread palm branches in his path. With our words and our songs of praise, we too acknowledge that he is our king and we rejoice that he is our savior. His path of service led him to the cross for us. As we respond to his call and deny ourselves, we commit ourselves to taking up our cross and following him. We pray in his name, who is both king and suffering servant, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to pull out your Bibles or your Bible app. Flip scroll to Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9, starting with the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. 
His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Philippians chapter 2. starting with the first, fifth verse. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who th though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. We now we'll listen to the choir. Thank you, choir. Beautiful, as always. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We're in Mark chapter 15, starting with the first verse. Mark 15. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He 
answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things, and Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison, whom, whom had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak and then twisted together a crown of thorns. They put it on him and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led, led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place, place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his gar garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what, should, what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charges against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourselves and come, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved himself. He, cannot, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And some ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There was also, there were also women looking on from the distance among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and Josie and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up, to, came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, 
he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled against the entrance and he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Josie, saw that where he was laid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, Savior and King. Together we make our common confession of faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message. Morning, everybody. How are you guys? You guys like the snow? Yeah, no. eh. I, do. I do. I still kind of like it, but not as much. I, spent... I like it because it's I got born in Minnesota. Yeah, well, there's lots of snow there, that's for sure. Yep. I spent a long time in a place that never gets snow, so I'm not as used to it anymore. Okay, I got a simple question, got a simple answer for you guys. You've got two choices. What would you like better? Some kind of mean, cranky adult, or maybe an upset parent walking up to you and wagging her head like this. Or a sweet little puppy dog prancing up to you and wagging his tail. <laughs> Which is better? The dog, of course, of course. Man's best friend, there's something special about the dog. Uh, and I think God makes them as our best friend so that we can learn from them. Um, I think Pastor Brian will appreciate this little dig. You don't see any comfort cats in hospitals or nursing homes. We call upon the dog. They're a good example for us. They, they love us unconditionally. Sometimes even when their masters beat them, they're still loving to them. But sometimes... We're not as good as our dogs. We tend to wag our heads at people. Sometimes at kids we don't like. You know, some, sometimes we deserve getting our heads wagged at by our parents for a little bit, I think, you know, when we misbehave. But there's a guy who didn't deserve getting his, having people wa wag their heads at him. Who, who was that guy? I know. Jesus. Jesus. But that's just what they were doing when he was hanging on the cross. He was dying for everybody's sins. And here they walk by, wagging their heads. You, you are a preacher, young lady. I was just going to mention that. Now that we've been so baptized into yes, Jesus, I'm yep. Yep. Everyone's baptized. Yep. Jesus makes it so that instead of being head waggers, we can be tail waggers, like our dogs, right? We can excitedly meet new people, even if they're mean to us and they want to be our enemies. We can still be like our dogs and wag our tails and welcome them. You guys want to practice wagging your tail? You don't have to actually wag your tail when you meet people, but you can remember this so that when you do, you greet them like a puppy dog. Yeah, let's do it. Stand up, stand up. You got puppies? All right. Wag your tails. That's cute. That's cute. All right. We're standing up. It's a good posture to pray. And pray with me, you guys. Thank you, Jesus, for letting people wag their heads at you. Thank you, Jesus, that you make it so we can wag our tails. Amen. 
You guys can go back. Thanks. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I was going to play a clever little word game with you guys today, but I kind of had to give away the game with uh, the children's message. Uh, I was going to make you think when I gave the sermon the title of Heads or Tails that I was going to talk about Mark 15, 24, which talks about the prophetic fulfillment of Psalm 22, 18, where the soldiers gambled at the foot of the cross over our crucified Savior's garments. But no, actually not. I want to talk about Mark 15, 29, yet another of three at least fulfillments of Psalm 22, this time verse 7. The passers-by derided Jesus, wagging their heads. In wagging their heads at the God-man Jesus Christ, they unknowingly are wagging their heads at both God and man obliterating both tables of the commandments. And how easy it, is it for us as passers-by on our world scene these days to wag our heads in derision? Usually we wag them at our fellow man, not realizing that in so doing we are wagging them also at God who made them in his own image. I'm a serial head wagger. I wag my head all the time to the irritation of my wife. I turn on the TV, I wag my head. I go to a sports venue, I wag my head. Go to a college campus, walk around for a bit, I wag my head. There's lots of stuff to make us wag our heads these days. I have someone in my extended family who wags his head in derision all the time at all the hypocrites that he sees in the church. Totally oblivious to the fact that the mere thought makes him the biggest one. People routinely wag their heads in derision directly at God whenever bad things start happening. And I see people wagging their heads at each other all the time, even on Sunday morning sometimes, over perceived insults, minor irritations, differing opinions, what color the carpet is, whatever it is. We are all serial head waggers by nature. And whenever we wag our heads at passers-by, who don't, and we don't care enough to really get to know the situation better or get involved more deeply. It's as if we're crucified, crucifying our Lord all over again with each wagging of the head. 
Don't you think it's far better then that we behave more like our dogs? And instead of wagging our heads, we wag our tails in excitement and acceptance at the people we encounter. You should have seen our old dog, Molly, that we had back in Missouri. Her whole body shook violently whenever she passed by us. That tail was a lethal weapon. It put a dent in our metal cabinet in the office. And dogs like her are known to wag their tails as a sign of unconditional excitement and acceptance, just like I mentioned a moment ago, even at masters who beat and mistreat them. That is unconditional love, folks. Let's be more like our dogs. The Jewish folks crucifying Jesus would have been far better off behaving more like the, those kind of dogs, wagging their tails at the God-man Jesus and thanksgiving for what he was doing before their eyes rather than their heads. You see, to the Gentiles, or to the Jews, I should say, the Gentiles were all dogs. That's what they called them. But as we read in John 12, for example, of a group of those Gentile dogs coming up to Philip the evangelist and saying, Sir, we'd like to see Jesus. Hmm. Dogs, huh? I can just imagine how those Gentile dogs' tails were wagging in excitement and anticipation at getting to see this Jewish Messiah. <sighs> Would that it were those Jewish people wagging their heads. The great uh, sad irony in all this is that the people closest to Jesus, who know the most about him, are the ones behaving the most poorly toward him. They're actually behaving more like dogs in the bad sense. Again, in prophetic fulfillment of Psalm 22, for dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me, for they have pierced my hands and my feet. Thanks be to God, the Father, who sent Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit, who endowed Jesus, that Jesus, in his true sinless nature, is nothing like ours in our sinful nature. He has every right to wag his head in derision at us, especially while hanging on a cross. But instead of wagging his head east-west, he's giving an emphatic divine yes up and down north-south. And that nod stops for a while because it ends with his death. It's with him forever, his gaze down toward us. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're wagging their heads at me and I'm dying for them. And then when he does die, he says this, it is finished. All that head wagging, all that sin, I am dealing with it, Father. And I can only imagine the Father, metaphorically, of course, wagging his tail in approval. And I also think about how all the disciples, after three days of wagging their heads in discouragement and defeat, Wag their tails in excitement and anticipation at the sight of what we are going to celebrate on Sunday. You know, if it were up to us, our lives would be a lot like gambling. We'd wake up every morning and it'd be much like a flip of the coin. Heads or tails, am I going to wag my head in derision at the people I encounter or am I going to wag my, wag my head, I should say, or wag my tail in warm greeting? Unconditional acceptance genuine excitement about the relationship. Am I going to be disinterested in superior acting as a passerby, or am I going to be like my dog and humbly come up and nuzzle even those who beat me? Actually, maybe it isn't much of a gamble. Like me in my day-to-day, -day, without my wife correcting me, tends to come up heads a lot. But praise be to God, the one who gently nods his head downward in emphatic divine yes toward the world he loves, the one that wags their head east-west back to him, the one who willingly died to forgive us all sin, including that, including derision toward people that he lovingly made. He wags his tail excitedly in eager anticipation of 
an ongoing meaningful, meaningful relationship with you and me, whether we wag our heads in derision or not. He is indeed risen from the dead and lives in you now through your baptism, like that little theologian just said. So as you greet each new day, his resurrection and power and mercies are new to you every morning. That's a scriptural truth. Take it to the bank. Your shepherd gently calls your name, gently calls you to bend your knee in repentance, gently calls you to remember your baptism, and then gently bids you rise up in him. It's a new day in Jesus. So it doesn't have to be a gamble or a crapshoot, a casting of lots that tends to come up heads all the time. No, with your new sanctified will, and as much as you abide in him, it'll always come up tails. And you know what? Since I've been here, I actually see that reality in many of you. And it gave me joy to say what I'm about to say about you guys with a young visiting couple in the pews last night introduced to me before service. I wanted them to hear this. In Christ, with you folks, it's been coming up tails for so long, I think you've put that coin in your pocket. Although you'll never be perfect like Jesus, you can be trusted, relied upon. You bring glory to the Lord. He nods his head and wags his tail in approval. Even down to the kids. I served 10 years at another Zion. I never had a kid volunteer to acolyte. I am, I am blown away. Truly. I see that reality in you guys, and for you are the one who gently nods your head downward in an emphatic, divine yes toward the world you unconditionally love. You are the one who is willing to maybe even lay down your life for your enemies in order that their sins be forgiven by the one who laid them down for all. You're the one who wags your tail excitedly in eager anticipation of being in an ongoing, meaningful relationship with anybody. If they have purple hair, a nose ring, worship Satan, whatever it is, we love them. And we want to get to know them so that they can know their Lord. We got to stop all this head wagging, folks. Let's be tail wagging. It took Jesus being willing to be treated like a dog for all this amazing transformation to take place in you, to turn you from a natural born head wagger into an unnaturally born tail wagger. It took a lot of work. It took him being unconditionally willing to be surrounded by dogs who wanted to devour him. It took him being unconditionally willing to be mocked and scorned. Can you imagine? hanging on a cross, doing this all for people, and they walk and they spit on you and wag their heads. Nailed to a cross, clapping their hands and hissing. All of this, he did it, and all of it unconditionally. By his grace and by his grace alone, so shall you and I be. And I can't help but think that when all is said and done, his head will be nodding, his and his father's and the Holy Spirit's, in divine approval, and his tail will be wagging in excited acceptance and welcome as he says to you, well done, good and faithful servant. To our divine head nodder and tail wagger, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our offering. It's also noisy offering kids head to the back, grab a bucket. If you got change for the kids, raise your hands.
continue with the singing of our next hymn. We do come to Christ with our prayers this week, especially we pray for the family of Adele Riss as they mourn her death. We pray for Matthew Eisenbraun, the son of Dennis and Loretta Eisenbraun, going through severe emotional struggles. We pray for Joan Schmidt, mother of Karen Malone. She fell, had some internal bleeding. As they did some tests, they found that she also has two large masses growing inside her body. We pray for God's will to be done in that situation. We pray for Colton, Ashley, and Tegan Ehring. Colton heads out on a year-long Air Force deployment today. So we pray for safe travels for him and Ashley and Tegan as dad is away. We give God thanks and praise. We celebrate with Pastor and Stephanie as they celebrate their fourth great, fourth, fourth great grandchild. How old are you? Their fourth grandchild, their fourth grandchild and first granddaughter, Tristan Grace Schulte. We go to our Lord in prayer. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, we praise you again that your son, Jesus Christ, was ready to take our humanity and humbly be obedient, even to death on the cross. Through him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. With him at our side, there is nothing in the world that can really harm us. We are his own, purchased by his blood, shed on the cross. Because we are his, we are yours. Empower us through your Holy Spirit so that we may be ready to follow him wherever he leads, accepting whatever task he may assign us in his kingdom, ready to carry our cross and serve in his name. He is our king of love. We want nothing more than to live faithfully in his kingdom throughout our earthly lives and in his eternal kingdom. Graciously lead us to fulfill what we have commanded ourselves to do in his name. Father, we again remember our brothers and sisters in Christ whose devotion to him is being tested through circumstance. Cir circumstances you have allowed to come into their lives. Lord, on this day we lift up before you the family of Adele Riss as they mourn her loss. Surround them with that peace and comfort that can only come from Christ. Lord, we lift up also Matthew and Joan, Colton and Ashley and their daughter Tegan. 
Lord, we also give you thanks and praise. Thanks for families, for grandparents and kids and grandkids. Lord, we give you thanks and praise with Pastor and Steph as they celebrate the birth of Tristan Grace. Lord, at this time, we lift before you all those that we, we give you praise for, all that we pray for, all those names that we keep in the peace of our own hearts and minds. We hold them now before you for your blessing, O oh Lord. Keep them secure in your kingdom. Help us all to live in daily awareness of the truth that when Jesus is our Lord and King, we have what makes the life-saving difference now and eternally. Amen. With grateful hearts, we pray together the church's table prayer in words you taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I like the wagging of the tail analogy. I think that's great. It sounds a whole lot like an exclamation mark. So let us live our Christian faith with an exclamation mark. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. With holy awe, we follow our Savior as he moves steadfastly to the cross. We remain standing for our closing hymn. You may be seated. Oh, what a glorious day it is. What a glorious week it is with Holy Week. As uh, our next remembrance will be the institution of the Lord's Supper, that ongoing gift of God's grace and presence in our lives. And then, of course, the sad remembrance of his death on the cross, followed by you know what. <laughs> 
And uh, it's going to be a great week. Uh, pray that the weather is favorable for that time. Uh, anybody have a bap? Uh, well, we'll start with regular, regular bestowals of life like that to Tristan Grace. I have a birthday to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any re regular physical birthdays to celebrate this morning? How about the spiritual kind? Baptism birthday. Not a one. If you don't have a baptism birthday, what do we say? <laughs> we now, we now can fix both. We got one? Yeah, we got one. Mike, <laughs> happy baptism happy birthday. birthday. What day? 31st. 31st. On Easter. Very oh, you cool. just found out. That's cool. All right, we can sing happy birthday to Mike. That's cool. Uh, what about anniversaries? Well, Mike Nothing. and Tristan, happy, happy birthday to Tristan. Congratulations, yeah, thank you, thank Grandpa. You, thank you, thank you. Oh, and by the way, when you go out, I am not advocating an adult actually physically wagging their tail when they greet somebody. Just metaphorically, they'll think you're nuts otherwise. <laughs> I want to see it happen, actually. <laughs> go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs> Remember, catechism, we're in the narthex and adult Bible study is in the library we're switching this morning. Blessings to you, God's blessings. 